Gentlemen, 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 please. And you're also live here on Key Point, also on 3FM 92.7. Please. We're on also a number of radio stations across the country. We're on TV3 Ghana on Facebook and on DSTV channel 279 all across the world on 3news.com. A number of you sending us your messages. Good morning, Alfred. In fact, the LI2462 was passed to cover up the forest that was already so much destroyed by Galamsey. What is sad is that leadership uh, is to serve the interests of the people and not self. How come such a leader sits at the comfort of their, and their homes and disrespectfully have this legislation passed, you say? Thank you very much. And uh, also, Mr. Setabloso says, point of correction, the president did not put his presidency on the line. He said he was prepared to, and this is something that I've, I've said before. Um, Setabloso, it's a labor expert, thank you so much. This one here um, says, good morning. Tumiakwa says, Dr. Kenashibe, on your platform, told the whole world that Ghana Water Company is using polymer to treat the contaminated water. Consuming water purified with polymer-based membranes may have potential risks, health risks, such as short-term effects, um, gastrointestinal upset, skin irritation, respiratory issues, headaches, fatigue, long-term, increased cancer risk, reproductive problems, neurological damage, immune system suppression, kidney damages. To minimize the risk, choose reputable water purification systems to maintain regular maintenance and monitor water quality. This is coming from a doctor, um, Tumi Aqua. Thank you. Um, this one here from Plateau says, those saying the fight against Galamse is a collective fight, ask them if the thousands of mining permits granted by this government was a collective decision by Ghanaians. Government has what it takes to stop Galamse, but because of party Hiyasika, you see, um, this is not happening. Good morning, Alfred. I think Honorable Apia Kobe deserves the order of the voter. The only problem is that the Galamse is against their position. He won't get the, that award. He should extend his bravery to advocate for, it says, a new Ghana. Thanks, the <laughs> Evans, Ibn, Samba, Laura in the Upper West region. It says, good morning, Alfred. Kindly ask Lawyer Martin Pebo and Senior Hosi if the key of the police vehicle, okay, it says that was stolen, it says it was removed by Vomawa. I think we moved on on that matter. We have never heard them publicly condemn this act. I think you've not been listening. Lawyer Martin Pebo has commented on this before, to be honest. And I think two or three weeks ago, um, you can go to that edition and also look at that. And this one here says, I think it's not, it's not all excavator, excavator owners who do Galamse. I have been working in a, an area where Galamse is seriously going on, and I asked them who owns the excavator, and they said they came together to go and hire it for a day or two. So if Honorable Apia Kobe is saying those doing the Galamse are not the owners of the excavators, that's true, but they are also liable. Yes. Excavators are abundant and can be hired any time, just like going to hire a caterpillar to come and grade your road for you. You'll say, um, thank you very much. Okay, quite a number of them. I, I, I acknowledge the uh, 1,263 of your messages come to you. Lawyer Martin, people will have a take on this. On this TUC, you also, you also feel disappointed or they still have their right to, to have... Uh, to have their position heard. But let me yeah. welcome uh, Dr. Jamal Tonswa, is a okay. lecturer at the Gimpa Law School, yes. also the former ad legal advisor to Operation Vanguard. Doc, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, Alfred. Thank you for um, you know involving me in this discussion. Good morning to my uncle and senior, mm -hmm. Mr. Pebu, and then um, my seniors at the bar as well, mm -hmm. Dr. Meko. Um, Honorable Apia Kubi, it's nice to meet you on this platform and on this topic again. Perfect. I am inspired by Senor's, um, uh, you know, his approach of speaking truth to power. He's dropped a lot of, um, you know, pearls of wisdom that I think we should we should pick up and run with. Let me also acknowledge Kenel Festo Sabuaje retired. He's joining us on Zoom. Kenel, good morning. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. Good morning. My regards to all the great men in the in the Thank studio. You. But I don't see any strong woman there. <laughs> we would definitely would have, would have one. I, 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 yeah, they are, they are us. I, I, I thank <laughs> you. Thank you so much for the person to join us. Oh, yes. Council. Okay. 
Yeah, so um, to start with, once again, let's allow the uh, Accra Archdiocese of the Catholic Church mm -hmm. for the demo, the also called prayer walk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we're expecting that the other regions where there's Gal Galamse, Ashanti, uh, this, um, uh, Cape Coast, etc., right? Mm -hmm. Central region and the western, western north, all those archdioceses, I think the bishops should follow suit because we need a sustained effort, mm -hmm. sustained one, right? Mm -hmm. To be able to fight this menace. Yeah, that's the by way of prelims. Now, TUC. we are asking about TUC. You also feel wrestling? disappointed? <laughs> disappointed is an understatement. Yeah, disappointed is an understatement. It's a betrayal of the public trust. Is that what Senor said? Yeah, um, mm -hmm. the rest of the pan panelists. We give you power, and then you use it for your personal aggrandizement. Look, Jampo called me 5.30 a.m. this morning to reiterate his point, and mm -hmm. that, you know, that way it's easier. Yes. So that if you want to go into it, you can. He will come and testify. Look at the thing. Uh, Isaac Bampo and Joshua Ansa walked into the meeting with a tight straight, uh, script. Mm. A tight script suspending the demonstration. They had already signed. Please, let's place all emphasis on this. Mr. Kansi, we are all panelists here. Let's assume that we are supposed to be the TUC meeting. Mm -hmm. You and Dr. Harrison. Harrison come into the meeting with a type script that you've already signed, saying that the, meeting, uh, the uh, demonstration is suspended. The strike is suspended. And the objective the, of the meeting was to discuss whether or not exactly. to call the strike. That is it. So that sums up the whole thing. It sums up the whole thing. I'm like... Is that Bampo? Bampo, who usually is guns blazing. Yeah, fire brand. I'm surprised that Bampo would do this. It's not a charade. Yeah, it's just a complete betrayal. Uh, whilst I was away, so you know what were the strongest terms you guys use? Because yeah. they betrayal of the public. Your word. <laughs> no, I mean, no, oh, no, if, well, it's good to repeat good. other terms mm. that other panelists have used. So I say, what did you say? I hear there was fire. Like your bomb. Your bomb is oh. what we are looking for. <laughs> today, <laughs> my, today, my anger is more about bail reforms, of course. Yeah. Okay, yes. Mm. Uh, since I know that you guys will take on the... Unfortunately, I didn't have a bite with the bail yeah. reforms. Uh, uh, okay, yes. yes. So, you see, look, and... Um, so with this complete betrayal of the public trust, so you heard what uh, Osengame said, that they should apologize. Bampo and uh, Joshua Ansa, they can't continue to do this. I they mean, should resign. Like, yeah. <laughs> How? You come into a meeting. They should that resign. Is, I did not discuss. That's Bampo, Bampo and Joshua Ansa. This resign, resign. Why? And save, why is and save the institution. I mean, just that the... Why is this that? The TUC is so not what see, it, is, it used to be. No, no, because no. It, the no, workers should rally and get these people out. Yeah. yeah. So you see what they like, we locally say in Chi, that Nyami on So you see that they had already typed it and it mistakenly, <laughs> they mistakenly pulled it out. And they showed that they had already uh, signed. So Bampo and Joshua Ansa, I think I support the call that they should leave. I yes, think maybe result. Bampo is tired. Oh, in years past, look, it was exciting to hear Bampo. When Isaac Bampo talks, I'm like, ah, this man, maybe he should be voted president. Hey! I beg you. Uh, yes, those days. No, you know, the way we are timid as men, when you hear Bampo talk, then you're like, hmm, or no, like he, yeah, Sam Seladi, are in your hand, like that kind of this. Mm -hmm. So I always like Bampo. But the way Bampo, oh, no, 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 no. I think Bampo is spent now. He's spent. He should go. He should go because this, this is so disgraceful. It's so embarrassed. You <coughs> go into a meeting with the statement already signed a by Bampo. Not a draft yes, on the soft where you Bampo and Joshua and Sir. That's what Jampo is saying. That is Jampo's pain, and that is all of us. Our pain that Jampo and uh, sorry, Bampo Isaac Bampo. That's the head of the Closer yeah. Executive yeah. Secretary, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Joshua Anza, yeah, TUC yeah, General yeah, Secretary. Yeah, They've yeah, sold yeah, us yeah, short. Yeah. They've sold us short, and so they have to exit. Ah, Joshua Anza even looks frail. Joshua Anza is yeah, not yeah, physically, yeah. I mean, uh, well, well, he doesn't well, look well. the part. When it comes to well, the optics, you're like, ah, yes, why is this old man looking frail like that leading TUC? He doesn't even look like he has a stomach for a fight. No, he doesn't look physically like he has a stomach for a fight. So he doesn't look the part. You know, there's an optics. And you see your secretary general should be looking enthusiastic, energetic. Answer looks frail. So I'm not surprised he's chickening out. He doesn't look the part. You see, the optics also count. You remember those days, people would look at JJ's picture and say, ah, they'll vote for him, the red man. Uh -huh, he's handsome, those guys. Yes, there's that part. Mm -hmm. When you look at answer, 
physically, he doesn't look the part. He doesn't have the stomach for a fight. You need a stomach for a fight. Because how do you go into a meeting? You are supposed to sit with your colleagues and decide. If not yet decide, then you go in with a tight script, signed, so, signed, so sealed, and delivered. For the record, they had met a government team, uh -huh. which they never disclosed who was there and who was not there. Thank you. So only a few of them had gone to meet the government team Thank the day you. before. Yes. And that is why they had taken the position that they had taken. Thank you. That was made clear. So that is where the allegation of compromise is coming. And please, I will buy into it. Look, when we say compromise, yes, we didn't see any money exchange hands. But when we say compromise, it's not always about money. It can be friendship. Because are you aware that the chairman of the TUC is friends with Napo? So they will know. call him Napo's boy. Yes, ask know. those who know the so, labor so, system. So, I, mean, I, know, I know Bernard very, very uh -huh. well. They can call right. him Napo's boy. No, but Bernard, the energy I'm, I'm saying, okay. no, he, has, he, has, he's, he works in the energy sector, so he keeps uh -huh. a relationship with everybody. Uh -huh. But well, for me, I know he's a very nice. principled guy. He's on this, he's, he's part of the Ghana coalition against. Can I'm saying. I see. His position is is not is not different from what what I think I. So his position is not consistent with the leadership of TUC. I don't think so. I don't know. I don't know what happened. You are the chairman of the TUC, and at that meeting, he was one of those who were in prison that we should accept that prepared switch. But you can't say that. forgive me, one. The fundamental problem here has to do with the issues of trust. Exactly. Now, if you've had a meeting, and you know, organized labor right now, you have three key, key, key factions. So you definitely have to come back to the plenary and have consensus on the way forward. To go to a meeting with a typed, mm. printed, mm. it's okay to draft something Science because from, from, what, yes, from what you've heard, you think that this is likely the reasonable path to take. Mm. So you can draft something. I don't think we should be, we should, we should be grateful for drafting something. But when you print, it means it's final. Mm -hmm. and because you, sign. you see, And you sign, it's final. Then what, what's okay. the conversation for? Mm -hmm. That's a total betrayal. Yeah. Of uh -huh. trust. And, and there's one person happens. there's one person you are also missing out in all this conversation. It's the GME. Yes. They are thank supposed you. to be more responsible about thank this matter. You, you, you know, know, and, and, and I'm very disappointed yes. in their positioning. They they issued the statement on their own. They didn't issue it on, on the back of, of organized labor. And they actually held a position. And they are the ones who are the forefront of the medical and health consequences of the failings with exactly. the management of Galamsey. But for them to also have managed things the way they did. That was really another big betrayal of trust. Thank Let's you. add the Nestle right. Midwives uh, um, Council because they issue a special statement saying they are going to join other They have their independent, their, okay. their, their, their so autonomy, is it not? Okay. Mm, so continuing. Yes. 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 I, the, yes, I was coming to the GME. Yeah, the GME too has led us down. The Ghana Medical Association, Frank Srebo. Look, you go down in history as a villain, a big villain. Yeah, because doctors know it better than us about the effects of this galamsey. Did you hear, you see, please, I find the narrative, that, or even not narrative, the statement by Ghana Water that the treatment they do doesn't take out metal, so please, mm -hmm. are, we, are we getting, you yes. followed it? No, no, yes, that sure, when that they treat the water, they are not taking cool. out the metals. So the mercury, the lead, those ones that are going to give us a kidney issue and are already giving us a kidney problems, renal problems, etc. They don't take it out. We all accept that. Mm -hmm. No, that, 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 that is what it is. You see, apart from reverse osmosis, uh -huh. which is able to remove all the ions in there, yeah. and which is not economically viable, mm -hmm. there's no means of removing the metals. Thank you. So they persist in there. So that's why I said that. Water being clear doesn't mean it's safe. Thank okay. you. And we should, we should, we should uh -huh. make that point. So please, strongly. let's keep repeating that point, that this is our water that has been treated. They've not removed any mercury. They've not removed lead. Mr. Okansi showed the Densu, uh, this, uh, that, that's the water that has come from Densu up to the Wager Dam. Mm -hmm. You see the color? It's coming from Etiwa. Exactly. Galamse in Etiwa. So we are being poisoned, citizens. We are being poisoned. So this thing is not about party colors. We are mm -hmm. being poisoned. And you have a GMA, Ghana Medical Association, do this to us. I don't know what Franz Riboy is thinking. I don't know what mm. he's thinking. Please. And uh, I'm sure Fessus will uh, come in. Can yeah, I have you come by? He said I heard him on this because I still have the floor. I want to add one uh, this is statement on that. He mentioned the number of military being 100. They deployed this thing. Please, yeah. I want to call on the president. They should deploy more police. We don't want, you know, the military, they've told us that they, they shoot to kill. Please, they shoot to kill. Ten. Let's, let's be careful. You see, the, if we are not careful, we are going to uh, end up with the 
this and cure being worse than the disease. Mm. Remember, in election 2020, we killed eight citizens. It's still a big matter on the head of the president. If we encourage the way we are angry, we keep goading the military, goading, goading them, they will kill citizens. And then before you realize, a lot will turn out to be innocent. So I think mm. we should bring in the police. Bring in the police. Bring down Paris and his people. Ah, you know you know that we've been talking about. You only is a master tactician when it comes to operations. So they should let you know lead. Yes, I'm aware that Paris is fighting you know, please. Oh. They should stop that fight. Everybody agrees that in the police service, you know, is a master of operations. Dan Paris give you know, a lead role in this. Okay. Let us put in more policemen. We don't want military killing our citizens. Enough right. of the Tichiman love and those uh, killings in the right. election 2020. We've not resolved that. So we don't want more killings. No more killings. 10 o'clock. Uh, can I first and, and uh, on the back of what Lamati Bebo has just said, you've seen the measures as outlined or announced this week. I mean, how far reaching are they? And, and because of the increasing existential threat that we are faced with, will this bring the immediate and needed solution that we are talking about now? Okay, once again, thanks for having me and my <clears throat> sincere regards to the great men in the studio. I've answered this question a few times on other channels, and my straightforward answer is that the approach of the government to start with has not been decisive. It has not addressed the realities of the impact of Galamse on all fronts, and it has certainly not addressed the concerns of a number of stakeholders, including, you know, the organized labor and so on. That's a broad statement. Let me pick on this issue of shooting, shooting to kill. That I believe has been attributed to the gentleman called Joe Weiss, whom I think is an MP. And then another MPP commentator, a female that I you know, seen several times on, you know, your Good Morning Show, TV3. Mm -hmm. Now, it's a very ill-informed uh, rhetoric. First of all, in any conflict of a warlike nature, there are rules. And they originate from the 1949 Geneva Conventions that otherwise call the laws of armed conflict. And one principle that everybody who goes through military training is told is that you never shoot an enemy, a combatant, who is not in a position to defend themselves. So for instance, when a parachuter is parachuting down, you don't shoot them whilst they are still in the sky. You wait for them to land, remove the harness, recover their weapons, before you can engage them. So, the idea that Joe Weiss is saying that when people jump into the rivers from the Chamfans, they should be shot. That is against international law. And I want to believe that we claim that we are, you know, uh, Democrats and so on. But the moral side of this argument is that in that studio, references have been made to big wigs. You know, the main people behind Galamse. And they are not those Goro boys covered in mud that we see on TV. They are party people, they are financiers, they are this, they are that. Now, if you want to kill, then we must investigate which of these elements have violated our laws. Shoot them first, and then we go and shoot, if you like, the Goro boys uh, in the mud. Let me quickly come to, you know, the government's uh, effort so far. First of all, Ghanaians must understand that Kwame Nkrumah left us with six battalions. They are still in place. And then we've added um, many more, about 10 of them, some of which existed at the time that Nkrumah also uh, was there. So we're talking about, about 16 units. Now, each battalion minimum has three companies, or supposed to have three companies. A company is 120 officers and men. So that 100 men and women 
that the armed forces deployed upon the directives of the president to Atiwa is less than one third of the combat force of a battalion. And minimum we have 16 of them. Now, if indeed we are fighting a war, which I think was the rhetoric that my honorable member from um, Asantia Chim North used, we're encircled on all fronts, on all our flanks from the west to the east to the north. But currently we are told that the voter is also being contaminated from the white and, up, uh, white and black voters, as well as from the Afram Plains or Afram River. So you don't fight that war with a company of troops. Again, with how many rivers do we have? Or how many rivers are we talking about? Some have said seven. But we can mention the Tano, you know, the, the, the Ophin, the Ancobra, the Pra, uh, the Brim, the this, the that. Let's say on the average, each one of these major rivers, excluding their tributaries or including their tributaries, ran a distance of 100 kilometers from the hinterland to the coast. Now you select one, which is the Brim, and then you go to Atiwa with 100 men and say that you are fighting Galamse. I mean, that, that is not a decisive action at all. Again, my colleagues in the studio have mentioned that this effort, this war, is one that needs joint operations or combined forces. There is a law and order dimension of this Galamse. That is a function of the police. There's a forestry dimension there's a minerals and mining dimension. There's environmental protection dimension. There is a dimension of importing fourth industrial revolution equipment or machinery. So you need the Ghana ports and harbors. There are women who have been trafficked and are being held in some of these Galamse camps. Now we need social welfare. We need gender experts, for instance, to go in. But for the past eight years, assuming that the government was not doing anything. Couldn't it, as we say in conflict analysis, do a mapping of Galamse in Ghana mm. so that before the government put out that one page directive or whatever we may wish to call it, the government should display that map on TV for us to see the scale, the scope of Galamse impact on, on, on the country. And then we'll be able to suggest to him that 100 men moving sequentially from brim, one spot on the brim, not the 50 or 100 kilometer stretch of the brim. You know, we've not talked about uh, Kongo Dumasi, for instance. We've not talked about the um, Enyinem that has been cited in the studio. We've not talked about the uh, dollar power. I mean, what kind of effort is this? Either the government doesn't appreciate the issue, the existential threat that is confronting Ghana, or it doesn't care, you know, for whatever reasons that you and I can surmise. Mm. But let me use one analogy to explain the dilemma that we are faced with, if you may permit me. In 1831, the king of Ashanti was Ose Nana Ose Yao Akoto. Now he wrote, I don't want to use any English word that might probably insult or be an insult to the stew. But he wrote to the British, telling them that the abolition of the slave trade from about 1806, 1807 was jeopardizing the, the, the grandeur status of Ashanti. And therefore the British was being requested to reinstate the slave trade. In 1847, 46 thereabout, the king of Dahomey, granted that there was no Togo and so on at the time, mm -hmm. was called King, king Gizu. Now Gizu wrote to the British again and said, look, this slave trade that you have abolished without any substitution is, is destroying you know, the status of my Abome uh, stew. Because every year I could sell 8,000 slaves and then earn about 300,000 US dollars in 1847. So therefore, reinstate the, the slave trade. 
The question I want the government, the question I want the Nananum, that is the House of Chiefs, because I've heard certain pronouncements from government officials and members of the National House of Chiefs, the people of Ghana is, should the British have reinstated the slave trade? And the question now is, because of some dollars that we can get, should mm. we destroy the heritage that our Nananum you know, left for us over hundreds of years? And in our generation, we want to destroy everything. See, the flippancy of it is that, oh, we'll reclaim the land. What, what does reclamation mean? Well, you reclaim the land and fill the holes. Do the trees grow to the 100 years that they had been in existence and have the capacity to absorb the carbon in the atmosphere, for instance? The poisons that have gone into uh, the natural habitat. And I think we all went to school and we did some science. Mercury is not destructible. You can't destroy it. So wherever mercury is, it remains in perpetuity. They are going into our systems, our human systems, and people are being born, we are told, and we can't you know, uh, doubt what Professor Sampene and others are telling us. Mm. Deformed babies, some with our genitals, some with legs fused together, some with six fingers or four fingers. Or whatever. Is that the kind of heritage that we want? So if we want to partner with the global north, who to start with want to obliterate Africa from the face of the earth, then let us help the white man to eliminate us so they will come and control this land. So I mm -hmm. think that the government needs to you know, show more faith um, in the effort that is, is putting in. So far, I don't think this is going to solve the problem. Not because... One, because the military is not, like Dr. Kamosho said, that peacekeeping is not a job for soldiers, but only soldiers can do it. So mm. in the short term, Kevin Galamse per item, one of the government's narrative or directive is to deploy security forces to curb it. But sustainably, soldiers are not the ones to stop Galamse. We need a few more resources. And I think members in the studio have asked, where is this? Where, where are the police? You know, where is, where is our intelligence, for instance? Because some of the Galamseyers are terrorists. National security knows. Some are former fighters from the Civil War, Cote d'Ivoire, in 2011. They are all in Ghana. Some have run away from Niger and wherever. They are all here. They are mining. Is that not an existential national security threat? So deploy 100 soldiers who go day one couldn't arrest even a fly because the flies had all run away. Mm. And all to do was to destroy 18 chamfans and 10 this, that, that, that. And one, and I, let me call it caterpillar because that's yes. the way that those of us who grew mm. from the village. <laughs> yeah, yes. One caterpillar. Mm -hmm. And people are saying that, you know, shouldn't we applaud the government? They should ask themselves whether this effort is the one that will end Galamse, or whether, as I'm trying to, you know, suggest, we want to be extinguished, you know, from the face of this earth as a, as a people. Hmm. Can I first of all, thank you, and leave us a number of questions that I'll come to um, sure. Dr. Tonzoa with as well. But please stay with me. And nobody uh, apparently wants to make a quick point on this Mercury matter. Yes. Yes. Uh, indeed, I'm happy that uh, uh, Kennel also uh, probably talked on the Mercury. Mm -hmm. I wanted to just call your attention to the fact that before the PNDC law 218 mm -hmm. was enacted to allow for operations in small scale mining, there was a PNDC law 217 that uh, affected the, uh, the use of mercury, prohibited the use of mercury. And therefore, anybody who went into mining under uh, 218 ought to have considered the existence of 217 before engagement. I see. Uh, I want to leave now, so maybe my concluding statement. Mm -hmm. uh, let us not politicize uh, this fight. And I see it, as I told uh, uh, you and Prof uh, endorse it, that this is a war against our nation, our may, may, uh, mere existence. And let, therefore, let's look at it that way. Mm -hmm. And again, I support the call 
for an immediate action pursuant to uh, a systematic solution to the, the problem through other means, including legislation. And I call on Parliament to be responsible to the citizenry. Otherwise, we are also corporates in uh, the failure to fight uh, Galamsey. Um, Galamsey. And then my short expose on the bail applications and the laws of Ghana. Uh, all crimes are bailable Thanks by so the laws of Ghana. Mm -hmm. And it has also been determined in the Supreme Court in the case of Martin Pibu versus the Attorney General. And uh, I don't think that judges in Ghana ought to be sentimental in matters before them. They should just follow the law simple. Mm. The fact that somebody is on bail doesn't even suggest that that person will be acquitted and discharged. Right. And the fact that somebody is in custody doesn't also mean that that person who will, will be sentenced, uh, will suffer a sentence or anything. So let's all follow the law. In fact, on one breath, you will be seeing somebody as facing the law and you will be using sentiment against that person. The next day, you will be the person facing the law. So let the law be no respecter of persons. Indeed. But again, those of us who want to enjoy our rights under the Constitution, particularly the right to demonstrate, should also understand that it comes with a commensurate uh, responsibility to ensure that you even demonstrate lawfully. And this is the uh, education that we have to give to the, the citizenry. Indeed, the fact that you are expressing your opinion in your demonstration doesn't mean you should also hurt my interest and right in your demonstration. Point For one. example, you also come and destroy my property. You don't have any such right. But uh, uh, even when you are a judge and somebody takes your wife and that person comes before you, you are not to use your sentiment. You are to use the law in the application before you. And I left criminal practice because of frustration. I was getting in applications for bail. <laughs> and I don't want others to leave also. Otherwise, on we'll be left undefended. Well, thank, thank you, you very 17 much. 17 after 10. Let's read the section 22 of the law. The one that says that it's a crime if you don't report, right? Uh, so that you uh, take so it along. Let me read it just briefly. It says, <laughs> let me read it briefly. It says that <laughs> section 22, every person who, knowing that a person designs to commit or is committing a felony, fails to use all reasonable means to prevent the commission or completing thereof is guilty of a misdemeanor. Okay. So that is a duty to prevent. So when you see a crime being committed or about to be committed, you have to report. That's section 22 of Act 29. Thank, thank you, lawyer Martin Pebu. 18 after 10, you're still live here on, on Key Point. Now, uh, on, on the matter of intelligence, um, Dr. Tonzoa, and having monitored what is happening now, and your inclusion in this conversation is critical because of your association with Operation Vanguard. Hmm? The, somebody says there's a difference between gossip and, and intelligence. What we see a lot more times is somebody has just gone to say something about mm -hmm. Martin people mm -hmm. and say that's intelligence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How come that with, with all these operations, they've not arrested anybody as yet? With all the sites they've gone to, before they get there, the people have fled mm -hmm. the site. They just go and destroy chamfans and, and uh, seize water pumps. What's going on? A lot of things could be going on. Um, uh, the retired senior officer has already articulated the fact that if you look at the strength of the, um, the troops that we've put in there, uh, do we really think that that those numbers can actually do the job effectively. And um, aside that, I think that one of, one of the things, you know, so the military doesn't just get up and deploy. Um, there, there are some thought processes that, would go, that they would go through. You want to even ask about where the loyalty of the, of the, the, the locals would lie. Is it with the, I mean, you know, those who are causing the threat or is it with you, those who are uh, being put there to maintain peace and security. And so wh what does the analysis even tell them? Mm -hmm. Your question was on intelligence, but for me to start with, we don't need the military there. Um, 
We don't need a military in for this, right? a long time. I mean, where it has reached now, we need to, if you like, get into the the field and then you know get illegal, suspected illegal miners out of the field. And so the military might be needed for that purpose, but that should just be for the short term. Mm. Now, if you ask what is the basis of the mandate of the military in the field, I would say that they are perpetuating an illegality. The military? Of course. Perpetuating an illegality? Well, but then what they are there because an operational order probably has said that they should go. That's mm -hmm. how the military works. Where did the operational order come from? It came from um, His Excellency the President, the Commander-in-Chief. Uh, what has the operating orders asked them to do? Can whatever instructions they have from operational orders antagonize or you know, run contrary to constitutional requirements? Are they supposed to shoot people and kill? Are they supposed to um, violate or you know, undermine the rights of people uh, to property? No. And so... It is a misunderstanding of the problem. But um, earlier speakers have said that we either have a situation where leadership is clueless about what is going on or has deliberately refused to respond to um, the matters as it should. And so point is this. Throughout the conversation, you've heard issues about theft wars. It's unfortunate Honorable Apia Kubi is not with us. Um, he was talking about whether they have a certain mandate or the Minerals Commission has that mandate. We've heard Honorable Dafia Mekpo say that uh, the Minerals Commission would need some helicopters or so. Logistics. logistics. Yes, I, I'm saying that You've heard about how it. much money has been committed to the interventions. A lot of questions must be asked there. How are state institutions... Um, of course, you've also heard about Parliament's failure and um, how maybe irresponsible Parliament has been, in the words of the, pol the parliamentarian. And so all this hints to a, a very basic point that we are having a governance crisis. And at the heart of that crisis has to do with institutional problems and lack of political will. If we do not frame the problem as such, there is no way we would have responsive interventions that would address the matters and, you are and so and so mm -hmm. lack of political commitment i'll tell you what from the field and you can do any empirical research and find this out when you deploy troops the swoops are usually selective the swoops are meant to undo your political opponents and so even within the mining community they know among themselves which miners are from which side of the political divide and military officers, and they know it, and that's why some of them are reluctant and very reserved about their inclusion in this. They are sometimes given very specific instructions as to what to do. Or if they hit at the wrong places, you would find how such situations of um, such swoops are addressed in terms of the people arrested, in terms of how they manage exhibits and so on. And so the, it's a charade, as someone has said. But, but your view had raised concerns about the military's involvement in this and how that, in your view, could impact on or dent the image of the military. Why is that? <laughs> just Google it and see. Maybe just keywords would just be armed robbery, maybe Operation Vanguard, maybe military. In Ayanfuri, you've had situations where military persons who were in military uniform had gone to conduct robbery and they were caught by the civil police. Mm. You have had situations where military operatives from the Flagstaff House with land cruisers belonging to the state have gone to extort from mining sites. That's true. Erastus Asaridonko's uh, um, <laughs> documentary has revealed that when journalists visited Apapaman, they saw um, you know, military elements on the mining site. And I can tell you that there are situations of blue on blue. What it means is that you would go as a military force to conduct an operation and, and it, you, would, you would find another set of military people and you may have a clash. Hmm. And, and it's very curious because for a swoop to be conducted on the basis of intelligence and for you to take about six hours to get to a mining site, kind of lay ambush, strategically wait and, you know, charge upon illegal miners 
And the very moment that you finish cleaning up the crime scene, land cruisers arrive with persons in military uniform who are actual military officers with double magazines, and they tell you those are national security folks. Mm -hmm. This is a joke. Mm -hmm. And I feel very sad coming from that background. I am very proud of my military heritage. It is an institution that I will defend any day and every time. But I'm also ashamed that our commanders have been allowed, they've allowed themselves to be manipulated by politicians. And Alfred, mm -hmm. there are certain occurrences that has escaped the public's scrutiny. In recent times, how many generals have been, have been appointed as ambassadors just when they retire? How many chief of defense staff have become ambassadors? Let's read in between the lines and ask questions. Ah, okay, so. That we expect you to be tired after a very stressful job oh, yeah. as a chief of defense staff. Maybe 30 years, 40 uh, years. Senor. It, it, and you finish, it's, it's a, and there's a, a reward a, for you. No, so, so, you, so we are a bit guided on that particular one. Mm -hmm. I agree with you with almost everything you said. But on this particular one, I've, I've been privileged to query it a bit before. Okay. And and it's, if I could finish it, it, yeah, with it, it's, it's, what, what did you find? It's, it's one of the decisions. The military role is a very important one. So you really want this man out of your system for a while. It's part of our democracy, strategic democracy, security management system. I see. So ideally, you move the CDSs out of the system Senior for a while. I mean, that's okay. that's that's been the, the reason. It's not, it's not for a reward. Um, I, I said, you know what? You, that you found know out. what? Okay. Every citizen must defend and uphold the constitution. Agreed. More so military officers. If you, after serving in the military for decades, would soon forget that you must defend and uphold the constitution and the order established under the constitution, then we must really question whether you were um, you, a military you officer. Wrong, but I'm saying that it's a policy position mm -hmm. that they, they find comfortable. And I like it's that. It's not that it's necessary. Senor, I like that. Yes. And yes, this, yes, is, yes. this is a very but, but, important yeah. point. So policies mm -hmm. must yeah. be mounted on evidence and data. Uh, agreed. Where is the evidence that justifies that that is a sound policy? The fear mm -hmm. of Red Bull has him. No, but okay. I, okay. Why are you afraid of military no, but, okay. but, Look, let's not digress. So because it's, it's very important. It's, it's very, very important. Look, you see. Yeah. So an incentive structure is being created unconsciously. And I'm not, I'm not hitting yeah. the military commanders on this. Not at all. Mm -hmm. It's a very objective and a logical point. That if you are a senior officer and, or just an officer and you're watching what is going on, probably if you are a good boy, one day you'll be rewarded politically. Mm -hmm. That makes you vulnerable yeah, to political that's, that's manipulations. That is a situation that okay. exists. And, 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 let, 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 just, just for a little guidance, it's a situation Jamal, that Jamal. exists. He is a military person. Beyond former, a certain former. level, almost every, every beyond a certain level in your ranking, almost everything else that happens is significantly political. Yeah. So for you to be appointed as a general, it is a pure discretion of a political authority. Mm. There's a technical bit to it, but there's that political discretion that can deprive you of ever being one. So that that risk is not a risk driven by post service. It's, it's a risk that is within the, the service, service time. It's part of our recommendations on the on the on the on the reforms that we need in our constitution. Is it saying yeah. there are many ways of thinking about that? Then it means that when we have recalcitrant men and officers, we shouldn't even dismiss them. They've been given training on weapon. Um, handling There's and all that, that there's no tactics. The, yeah. Then yeah. we should just keep, continue yeah. keeping them within the military mm -hmm. because when we put them out, they will be dangerous uh, okay. to, the, to the society. Yeah, yeah. So and so, look, inside here or there, I think that yeah. policies must be mounted okay. on um, sound, evidential kind of basis. I I, well, Data should speak the other day, I was speaking to um, talk with Dr. Nyao Nyao Tamakula, and I'll bring in this question will go to both of you. That's um, can I first about Jerry retired and then also to to you, uh, that's Dr. Jamal Tozwa. Uh, th there's that belief that if the military is giving, quote-unquote, the free hand to work, they can end Galamse within a week. Is it one that you believe that th th that free hand is needed and that can be done within a week? But because there's a regimented approach to this, controlled by s somebody somewhere, they cannot do this within that period that we're even looking at. Yes, I, I, I think so. And um, it, it feeds into the earlier statements. But 
you know, my thesis is that there are two things at the heart of this problem. Um, lack of political will and commitment mm -hmm. to undoing the problem. And secondly, you know, structural institutional problems where you have, you don't, institutions are not well resourced or they are not well coordinated. And um, so those are the two things. So the question that you have asked, the part that it has to do with lack of, um, you know, it has to do with both, actually. Okay. So with the military, if you, if the way these operations would work is that you would have even public information officers, you would have, um, you know, health officers who would go with the teams, those who would do the actual work, and a legal officer. Question is this, what is the end goal? Are we just interested in getting into the field and then pulling out suspected illegal miners? No. We want to ensure deterrence. We want to ensure accountability. Mm -hmm. We want to prosecute our soldiers trained in evidence gathering. Um, our soldiers go in to do the prosecution. And in fact, the military is capable of doing that. And when I was legal officer, you know, one of the limitations we had was that we didn't have audience in court as legal officers of um, the military. Now, you only need a fiat, which can be written on even just any piece of paper, just an authorization from the attorney general to authorize you to prosecute. I see. We advocated for this. We never had it. But the point is that if you are part of the operations that led to the arrests, the immobilization of equipment, the gathering of exhibits and evidence, you are in a better position to prosecute these things and have a high chance of success. In any case, so that's one thing about prosecution, evidence gathering to start with. I mean, so we don't necessarily say, and there's some confusion that you, you should clear. The presidency says they've established or they've appointed four courts, but organized labor said seven uh, circuit <laughs> courts and seven, seven circuit <laughs> courts and <laughs> seven district <laughs> courts. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, organized labor is even doing the work more than the presidency is doing the work. They, and that's really best well, best yeah, well. interesting. But, but, but which courts are you taking them to? And what is or are the backgrounds of the judges in terms of even training. Now, um, the human resource uh, capacity of these courts, and I can tell you that in mining hotspots like Bekwai, Obwase, Dunkwa Onofin, Chechewre, you had only one judge at the time. I was a legal officer who was sitting in all these courts. How can such a judge be effective? Hmm. Now, put that aside, you have instances where arrests will be made, you know, um, prosecutions begin, and one of the things that you would see is one day someone walks to court and says that there is um, there is a letter from the Attorney General's Department saying there was a petition to the Attorney General's office, and that people were just bystanders and they were not mining, mm -hmm. and therefore um, Attorney General should act. So Attorney General calls for the docket, and that ends the matter. Yeah, right. But there is evidence in terms of pictures and videos and even direct and testimonial evidence that can pin these, these people, people down. down. So you find that the military's um, elements, the police elements, the courts, and even institutions that could also help in the evidence gathering and strengthening like the Minerals Commission, Water Resources Commission, Immigration Service, would not be in the loop. So how do you even fight this. expand the charges in a way that would um, com get people who are were actually no, a, a convicted. And yeah. then after so, so, and, what and, in, and so those the, are structural the, institutional the, problems the, the, and lack of po uh, political the way, will on the part of government to fight strongly. this. Yeah. Yes. I, I think that the nature of the deployment that really makes this a charade is just to appease you know, uh, um, the general public that oh, we are doing something. Because if, if you really, really are interested in fighting you know, the situation, then in the deployment, you make sure that you have covered all these areas and that people, there will be the right evidence, the, the, people, the people are going to be arrested and prosecuted accordingly. But you see, do something for the optics because organized labor uh, uh, you know, is saying something. And that, that is where we, we were totally in disagreement with the uh, leadership of organized labor because uh, see. by just announcing these things without the structures, without making sure that everything is going to go according to plan, it, it, it wouldn't solve the problem. Okay. Fair point. Now, I want us to hear the commander of this um, op operation 
called Two, um, who has been talking and then also explaining their mandate, uh, what exactly they're supposed to do in this phase of it. Uh, Colonel Eric Tenadu is a commander of the operation Tenedu. called Two. Tenedu. 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 Um, who has been explaining that their main focus is to ensure that the river bodies are rid of these illegal mining and then also to ensure that we have our water bodies cleaner than they look now. That's the focus for this first phase. Take a look. 18 chamfines that were on the water bodies and then about 10 uh, machines, I mean uh, water pumping machines also on the water body. This is an effort uh, to help bring back the color of our water bodies. And so uh, it will continue, just like I said. Uh, today is the first day, tomorrow will continue. But then I'm unable to tell you where we are going tomorrow. Uh, when it's time, I will let you know, but for now, all that I can say is that we are going to all the water bodies. And we have started from Brim tomorrow. We'll go to another location. And then we'll continue until we cover all the water bodies uh, in the country. And hopefully, we want to see a change in the color of our water bodies. Operation Hall 2 comprises uh, water bodies and uh, the forest. Basically, it's about anti illegal mining activities and wherever that activity is going on we are supposed to act on it but for now the directive and the instructions we have for this first phase is on water bodies strictly on water bodies for now and then after this phase maybe the next phase i don't know yet if we are directed to go into the forest then we are going to the forest but for this first phase it's on the water bodies well, for now, so like I said, this is the first phase. So the first phase is two weeks. Maybe after that, another two weeks, another two weeks, until all the water bodies are covered. So that's the leader of Operation Hall 2. Said they, they don't know the full scale of the operation as yet, because you heard him say they don't know, he doesn't know yet what's, what's going to be the, the next step. Senor? Senor, 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 before you come in, in 30 seconds, I know. No, yes. you, 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 you don't worry. Let it, before quick. senor comes in, I can tell you that the officer doesn't believe what he's saying. Ah, the, the officer. No, he doesn't believe what he's saying. Oh, that how? is Kenel Tenedu. Kenel Tenedu was um, the commanding officer of the 3rd Battalion of Infantry. I was at the 3rd Battalion of Infantry for my regimentals, and he was um, second in command at some point. He definitely knows and there is um, an MIO that, that's an intelligence office and there's an intelligence officer. One of the deployments the third battalion of infantry does is um, on operation hall duties. So there is nothing new to him. In any case, Ken Altenedu was also a military attaché to the defense minister. That is where policy, policy is in this country on defense matters. Thank you. But on media, before the cameras, he doesn't know because he's put in that position where he cannot really be himself. And so, please, let when those who say we shouldn't politicize it are saying so, they are not saying it in good faith because it is over and hyper-politicized. Thank you. Senor? I think that, I'll take from there, there are two things. Partisan and politics are not necessarily one and same. Mm -hmm. Partisanship evolves from politics, but politics is a matter of policy. Policies house is politics. Just forget it. I'm a lecturer of policy. That is the house of, of, of policy. Mm -hmm. So politics would definitely be a critical matter. This is a matter of policy. So you can't say we can't politicize it. But if you say talking about partisan po 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 politicization, I can relate to that. So they will look at it from a national character, as I've been saying the, 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 the whole time. This is a joke. What I just heard is a joke. And the military should stop allowing civilian politicians to put them in uh, and, and turn them into into um, how do you call that uh, uh, mass, those, those mascots. This nonsense must must actually stop, Mr. President. You either want to solve the problem or you don't. Stop fooling 
ass around and trying to pretend to be wanting to solve a problem. What is this? Look at what Colonel Abadi just said. Take the matter one by one. How did the Chanfuan come into this town? The excavators, how do they get there? Do they fly? The Mercury, how does it go there? We don't know. You want to tell me that after all this problem, the National Security Minister doesn't know the real people behind Galam say, we are a joke, he should resign. If you want to deal with the matter, go and deal with the matter. You know the people behind it. Same on them. You are sending the people there. You know that this size, this company you are sending is not big enough. It's not even a full company from the education we've just even received. Mm -hmm. So if you know that there's a forest reserve side and then there's a water body side, and you're, you're not dealing with only one water body, our army people, they are not at war. They are not fighting anything anywhere. This is the only war this country has. Why are you not deploying more than one company? Move some people to go and deal with forest reserve. Move some people to deal with this river, deal with another river. So quickly we get our people out of the plane. Because what he said is true. The military itself is even getting compromised over time. When they stay long in these areas. Yeah, so let the police do so, the work. This is police You work. know, my, my brother, you can, send, you can send in the military mm -hmm. to go and give the oomph for a start. Mm -hmm. That's why you take them in. It's a tactical move. They go, they clear up the place, they move, the police go back and start reorganizing things. But the whole structure is weak because the people behind this Galamse business are significantly in bed with the politicians and are politicians themselves. Exactly. Look, it is a state capture problem for a president as powerful as Nanado, not having the guts to really actually take the right responsibility. That tells you the state has been captured. Joe, we are on our own. We are on our own on this. If we want to fix this, every Ghanaian must start getting up. You can't wait for anybody to fight for you. When there's an opportunity to show your fight and your anger, you must do it. That is the only language our politicians will hear. We have to fight for our country. We have to fight for our children and our children's children. This joke can't continue. It must stop. That's why right, organized labor. You should start thinking you have been fooled. You have been made a joke. All the things that they promise you and all the steps they are taking, it's not going to take you anywhere. Did you listen to Kenaba Wabwaji? Where is the policy strategy for this? Are you telling me that it should take us up to now for us to shout for the government with all the resources it has to start thinking about it? You want to tell us that we don't have a mapping of where Galamse sites are? We don't know the people involved and that these same people are controlling political parties? Mr. President, you either want to do it or not, but this will be your legacy. You came into town with Kalipo and you are going destroying our water bodies and you are leaving us with brown poisonous water. You should be ashamed of yourself. Oh. Uh -huh. 42, 80 minutes. Please. Thank you. Uh, you're also live here on Key Point, also on uh, 3FM 92.7 and TV3 Ghana on Facebook. Now, this morning, I'm clothed by Cogra Clothing, the best version of you. Locate them on the Spinkters Road, 18 Junction, opposite Allied Oil Filling Station. Ground floor, same building where the Ghana made store. Contact Cogra Clothing on 0244-238-341. 0244-238-341. Choose Cogra Clothing. Choose right. I'm going to go for this quick break. When I come back, you have your take and then as well. Stay with us. We'll be back shortly. Welcome back to Key Point. And can Officer Sabaji will make a point in one minute and then I'll come back to you. Can, I, can Officer Sabaji, maybe before you leave us, a quick one? Thank you. Um, I'm not necessarily disagreeing with um, the second but last speaker who spoke, but I don't think we can emphatically say that the officer doesn't believe in, in what he was saying. The issue might be this, and we need to note carefully that the government did not heed the call for a state of emergency. Because per Article 31, I think the lawyers can best explain the, the procedures. But basically, a state of emergency declaration per Article 31 allows greater oversight and accountability on the part of parliament. I suspect that the government has used the executive instrument, you know, approach. So we don't know what kinds of communications, correspondences, have gone from the presidency to the ministry to the general headquarters. Now, 
a senior military officer like uh, the colonel would have a piece of paper written in military language that starts with what we call the situation. Now that situation is largely the text of what has come from the political authorities, painting a picture as to the scale of Galamse, the impact, the this, the that, the that, and then using that to underscore the need for action, and thereby directing the armed forces to do A, B, C, D. So the military will then derive what we call the mission. And I think the first item in that government paper, item one, was for the additional military personnel to go and curb Galamse. The military will frame the mission around this operative word, to curb. And then they will deduce whatever the, we call the execution paragraph is. The how the military is going to be able to you know, implement the government directive. So some of the things that the gentleman said, one, maybe one week, maybe two, is meaning that the government didn't tell them, you know, the timelines. Mm -hmm. So he's thinking that, okay, we'll come here, maybe we'll be here for one week. But he was very emphatic that there are two phases. Phase one will be the water bodies. Phase two will be the, uh, the, the forest reserves. So it suggests that the directives from government to the armed forces was not complete, that there were gaps. And the military has just deployed, for instance, a hundred. Now, if you interpret the meaning of the word to curb Galamse, which is taking place from the north to the west to the center and slightly to the east, how can 100 men less than one company Keb Galamse of that scale. So hmm. it comes down to the idea that I think uh, Ifo, Ifo, Osi, Senor uh, has said. The government is, is not serious about, about this fighting Galamse. And it's just buying time within the next two months before elections to pretend that it is doing something without necessarily dealing with, you know, the threat of the menace. But I must emphasize once again that Galamse is an existential threat to mm. Ghana. It's not necessarily like people coming to invade, but the resource of Ghana, apart from the environment, is the human beings. Now, the human beings fall ill, you know, with all manner of congenital diseases that are passed on from one generation to the other. With the economy in this state, how are people even going to be able to, you know, look after themselves? the cost of health is going to, you know, shoot up. Meanwhile, the money is not here. The money is sitting in foreign accounts and so on. So, like all the colleagues in, in the House are saying, the government must be emphatic, be very decisive, and let convince Ghanaians that it means business about fighting Ghana. What I have seen so far, not the numbers of the armed forces, but the absence of other stakeholders mm -hmm. in the fight mm -hmm. shows that the government, you know, is, is just going through the motions. Mm. I think that's Can all I, I can say for now. Can I, I do appreciate your thoughts and expert analysis on this matter. And, uh, you see, this threat we're faced with about, you keep making reference to Harrison, because you, this is your area, the fact that we are drinking water that we think is clean, but we are exposed to all of these heavy metals in, in two minutes. So I'll go to Donald uh, Dafiang for a last word on this matter, then we're done. So uh, thank you. Um, when, when you. When you mine with the methods that we are using, um, you release these things we call heavy metals. It includes lead, mercury, arsenic, uh, cobalt, chromium, many of them into, into the system. Now, these metals, when they find their ways, they find their ways into food uh, because the crops take them up and in the water that, that we drink. Mm -hmm. So merely um, sedimenting um, the water doesn't make it, doesn't rid it of these metals. Now, when you take these metals, they accumulate in, in your body. The body has no direct means of getting rid of them. 
So as you continue to drink water, eat food that is contaminated with these metals, you continue to build up within your system. Now, these metals bind proteins and nucleic acid that are the, the foundation upon which life is built. And when they, when they bind to these proteins and nucleic acid, two things happen. They inhibit the function of these uh, uh, um, proteins. And these proteins carry instructions that allow you to sleep and wake and, and all that. So if, for example, uh, what they call a transcription factor, which is an instruction that says make protein A to go and do C, if it binds and inhibits it, then that action doesn't take place. So the instruction to say when a fetus is developing, um, grow a limb by, say, send a microRNA mm -hmm. to regulate a particular gene, if it's bound by any of these metals and it's not able to fold the way it has to fold and bind where it has to, to regulate whatever activity, then that limb doesn't get formed. Mm. And so the baby will be born because other activities are going on, and so the baby will be born with no limb. Or because of overexpression of a particular gene, now instead of forming one limb, you form four. Mm. So the, 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 the danger with these metals is that they are indiscriminate in, in terms of how they bind to these macromolecular entities within the living systems. And that is how they are able to exert their toxicity. I don't understand the science language, but all I know is that we are faced with existential threat. Babies are born with deformities. Mm -hmm. That's it. Uh, I know that you have yes. two minutes, I beg you. Two minutes will be not be enough. Look, oh, please. That's the time I have. We can say I have been making the point, and that is the state has already spent nearly a billion on a supposed anti galaxy programs. We should be asking for accountability. In all this, it's included deployment of soldiers. Hmm. So if organized labor, leadership of organized labor is asking government to again deploy soldiers, it's as if, like the accounts will say, we are in Enkrani and trying to tete Enkrani. Okay. We are standing in the, in the midst of uh, 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 driver ants and are seeking to fight it. It won't work. The approach must be different. Because deployment of soldiers and they're giving it high sounding falutin names, Galamstop, Operation Vanguard, Galamstop number two. Oh, a 64 member interministerial committee. Have they been able to provide anything? No solution. Look, this government, part of the problem why we have indiscriminate degradation of the green environment so that for instance beneath school buildings are under attack football fields of schools are under attack buildings of farms people's planting farms are under attack is because this government has gone out of its way to buy what they call go catcher right. what the go catcher machine does is that it, it determines where there's high oil bearing uh, gold so when they tell you that in this studio, this building, there's a high oil bearing gold sitting beneath this building, the gold catches, they will come. That is why buildings of people, human beings in communities now are right. being invaded and pulled down because the gold catcher is telling them that there's a, there's a high oil bearing gold sitting beneath the building. Hmm. So the contribution of the government to the menace is so profound. Thank you. It's a, uh, the Member of Parliament for the South Dai Constituency, a uh, number of your messages asking that we should have the fire service come in to tame Senor Jose and <laughs> Martin Kwebu. He said they are unhinged. And uh, these are the kinds of Ghanaians that we says need. And a number of you also talking about Doc, Doc, Dr. Harrison is the General Secretary of the University of Ghana, UTAC. And so you're going to be hearing more of him on this platform. But the, those last words were very important indeed, and I do appreciate you coming. And uh, Dr. Jamal Tonzoa is a lecturer at the Gimpa Law School, the former uh, legal advisor to Operation Vanguard. A number of your comments as well directed to him that he knows his stuff indeed, and that's why we, we brought him here. And Senor Jose committed to the course every step of the way, and uh, th this I one here. Uh, we are eating tomorrow and tomorrow is tomorrow today. <laughs> How reckless can we be? We Senor, need evidence based, data backed approaches. Lawyer Martin Grebo, I appreciate you. Unintelligible. Thank you for the patience. Oh.
Thank you. you. Know. And uh, a number of people who joined us as well, Ken Officer Sabuaji. And so, and then also. Erratic. Uh, thank you, approaches. gentlemen. Thank you. We are done. Thank you. Uh, on behalf of the rest of the team, thank you for staying with us on Key Point. And congratulations to Dennis Boaberry Wedam for being called to the bar as well yesterday and to all the new lawyers as well. Have a good weekend. <laughs>